What is a tool that brought joy recently? I have a tool to show you that brought me some joy recently. So, uh, uh, uh. I did a show and tell here on the channel a few months ago after having gone to the Alameda flea market and I came back with a couple of containers and one was a Bell Systems lineman's toolbox. Just a beautiful fiber piece of kit, just like a gorgeous machine for holding tools. Uh, I It is in my house, it holds some very important tools for me and I love that thing. And that engendered a look into lineman's tools. And then I was also looking at, so I love industry tools, right? Industry tools are often the higher end of the tool spectrum, like snap-on, right? And I was looking at other lineman stuff I had and I re realized that I had bought a toolbox 20 years ago that came with two drawers full of tools in it. And one of those tools was this flashlight and it didn't work. And so I decided to make this flashlight work. Uh, and this is basically, as I fixed this, which basically just was cleaning some stuff, I fell in love with this flashlight and I wanted to give you a tour through it because it's a real spectacular model. Now, this is a Bright Star made in the USA. This is a Bright Star model 451. And I was really pleased to see that these are still in production. This company is still making these. This is an inspection light. So it's got a, a flashlight there, incandescent bulb, or uh, you can click the switch halfway and you can you can use it like that for signaling uh, or just, you know, like, what do you want to take a look at? But it has this inspection light, which you can turn on like E.T.'s finger and wait for it, extend it so you can stick it all the way inside something to take a look in there. Dude, that is, this is wonderful. Um, so let's take a look at how this operates because it's really, really neat. Uh, it didn't work when I first got it, uh, and I hadn't touched it for years. It sits on a shelf full of flashlights, so it's really simple. It's made the way the flashlights of my childhood and flashlights are still built, right? This is stamped metal parabola, an incandescent bulb, a little injection molded plastic part holding the bulb in there, and then the bulb, uh, it doesn't touch the top of the battery. It touches the top of the switch arrangement here, and if you look in there, what you'll see are the switch arrangement breaks off into two shunts that go to this part. Uh, oh, right, it's not gonna work unless the bulb thing is on. Um, and so basically the moment you pull this out, it transfers power from the front bulb to the side bulb. And that is, it's all mechanical. There's not electronics in there or anything. Um, and all I had to do was clean this with a little isopropyl alcohol and it fired right up. But there's another thing that I found that I loved about it. So it is there are two D-cell batteries. This thing feels totally bulletproof. It is injection molded. My guess is that it's ABS. I wonder if there's anything that'll tell me that. Um, it feels almost like Bakelite in the thickness of the injection molding. Like, this is dimensionally like an eighth of an inch thick here. That is not a product that has been reduced in size by, by, by profit seeking until it is barely a thing anymore. And I'm thinking of you water bottles that are made of plastic so thin, I'm crumpling them with my hands just while drinking water. No, this is a tool meant for being dropped and still working. This is meant for craftspeople in the field and it's beautiful for that. And there's an aspect I still have not revealed to you. Oh, right, you've got the hanging thing in the base here, but the base carries hidden secrets for one can pull out the spring and unscrew an extra bulb. Oh, oh wait, that is the bulb from the inspection light out here. Is there a bulb for the parabola light? Yes, there is, deep down inside there. Look at that, man. This thing is traveling with everything it needs to be repaired in the field. So it is a field repair tool that can also repair itself. And the thing that holds the little bulb is this little piece of stamped metal that just pressure holds 
the threads of that little magnifying inspection light and then you hold it here and just you you can just pop it in pop the spring down on top of it pop it back in let's put this all back together because it is just I love nothing you I, it's a great question I was planning to shoot this as a separate show and tell video but you asked the question and it seemed like a perfect moment to just bring it into this live stream and we'll turn this into a show and tell video all right so we bring this down we put this on top and we're back oh we're back up and running whoa uh, the inspection light works, but now somehow this is done. Oh, come on, what, what, what did you do? What, <laughs> now the inspection light doesn't work. <laughs> I got something a little funky in here, probably. Yeah, let's try that. It is plausible that I just like bent some little piece of brass. There it is. There we go. Now it works. And the inspection light also works. Yeah. This is a tool that I got recently that, wait, how did you really phrase it? You said, brought you joy. This is a tool that brought me joy. The Brightstar Model 451, get yourself one of these. They still make them, uh, but I like it even better to have this with Etch TK29 and Toolkit 09. This is great. This is like all we wonderful weathering history. Bless you, Bright Star, for still making great field repair kit material. Bob H. says, when you add, as you add new processes like 3D printing to your shop, do you think your current space will continue to work? Do you foresee a time when you might need a different shop space? Oh, I'm always foreseeing a time when I might need a different shop space. I love this space. Love, 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 love it. And... It's not big enough. It's not big enough for me. I'm running out of room here. Uh, to be clear, my job is 15 feet wide and 30 feet long. That's it, 15 by 30. That's 450 square feet. I don't know how you do your math, but yeah, uh, 15 by 30. How do you multiply 15 by 30? Well, I do 30 by 30, which would be 900, and then divide it by half, because it's 15 by 30. Um, it's not big enough. I do think about moving into a different shop space all the time. However, I've recently come to understand that I could probably move some of my display area and move into that zone. And I am slowly pushing towards doing that. I have just cleared, I said I've been cleaning up the tested offices. I've been putting up some bookshelves over there and I've actually been moving my maker library into the tested offices because it's much more likely for me to access that information there in a meeting with, with amongst us than here in the cave where I've sort of shoved this bookcase into a corner. Uh, it's also the bookcase was full and I didn't have any more room and I had two more linear feet of maker books. So I've moved all of those and there's a shelf that's about to leave and that might even allow me to start to think about bringing in a second lathe. Got two mils, it's only a short leap to a second lathe. Uh, James Albrecht asked, oh, if you're going to add another lathe, would it be the same size as your existing one or more like a jeweler's lathe? Uh, no, I actually already have my second lathe. Uh, so my lathe was built by a Taiwanese company in the, in the 70s and 80s that made these tool room lathes under a bunch of different brands. Um, I cannot remember many of the names of the brands, but they use the same castings on a bunch of different machines. And the one I have is called Shen Wai, S-H-E-N-W-A-I. And the model I have is the Shen Wai Chieftain 15 by 40. That's a 15 inch swing and a 40 inch bed. Um, I, I, I've rarely seen them come up. It is a spectacular lathe. And I have a Shen Wai, I have like a 12 by 36 also made by Shen Wai, which I bought way back in the se second season of Mythbusters for M7. So the lathe you saw Grant and Tori and Carrie using at M7 for all those years, that's my second lathe. Same brand as this, but like 30% smaller. Thank you so much for watching that video. Your support allows us to make more of this great content. If you'd like to help us on a deeper level, even head over to tested-store.com because we've got stickers. 
Who doesn't love stickers? Our anime-inspired tested logo in Japanese. Follow the process, not the plan. It's not a process. It's not a problem to solve, it's a process to manage other aphorisms that have come from my mouth. Um, and we have just made a full set of our demerit badges in sticker form. So you can cover your toolbox with all of your screw-ups and celebrate it with other makers. Thank you guys so much. See you next time.